One key insight about quantum computing is that quantum computers are not just flat out faster than normal computers. In fact, they have very little or no advantage whatsoever for most applications. There is a however, of course. However, there are some narrow specific tasks that they can solve way, way faster, exponentially faster than any classical computer. Which ones? Well, those where we can find a quantum algorithm that gives us that advantage. Yes, I know this is not a useful, straightforward answer, but this is where we are and this is what makes quantum computing so hard. Um, I have actually done an entire video on this topic, so if you want to learn more, you can watch here. And to make matters even worse, most of these specific applications are somewhat contrived. So this raises the question whether quantum computing will ever be actually useful. So it was widely welcomed in 2016 when Jordanis Karinidis and Anupam Prakash published a quantum algorithm for their recommendation problem. And this promised an exponential speedup for a very useful and wide-ranging application. In simple words, the recommendation problem is this. Given a user's past choices and similar user's past choices, which product should be recommended to the user next? Sounds familiar? Yeah, so um, the recommendation algorithm does a lot of heavy lifting for things like Amazon or Netflix or TikTok or YouTube. But just two years later, in 2018, a then just 18-year-old student called Ewin Tang proved this to be wrong. Allow me just a short public service announcement, because the name Ewin Tang is often misspelled as Erwin Tang on the internet. Erwin is a German name. The English version is Irvin or Irving. It's a bit outdated and old-fashioned at the moment, but it's still widely recognized. Anyway, as a German speaker, let me tell you one thing. This is an Erwin. This is an Erwin. This is an Erwin. This is not an Erwin! It's Erwin. Thank you. Okay, back to the recommendation algo. You can think of the problem of recommendation as a giant matrix, a table where in one dimension you have the users or buyers and in the other dimension you have the products. You can write into the matrix whether a user has bought a product or how he has rated it or some more complicated score using more data. You can then use this information to find similar users that bought similar products to generate recommendations. If someone with a similar purchase history to you on Amazon has bought a new book, chances are you might also be interested in that, etc. Let's say there are X buyers and Y products. The entire matrix can become quite large. If you've ever been on Amazon or YouTube, you know that there aren't just a couple products, but more like millions. And the same is true for the number of customers. The best recommendation algorithm we know scales with the size of this matrix, which is x times y. And the big improvement by the quantum algorithm by Karanidis and Prakash was that it scales exponentially better with log x and log y. What does this scaling mean here? Well, the fundamental concept here is called computational complexity and um, let me explain it in a simplified way. Whatever an algorithm does will scale with the size of the system. For example, an algorithm for adding up numbers will run longer and longer the more numbers it has to add up. So the runtime goes up linearly with the size of the problem, like this. If an algorithm scales polynomially in time, it will look like this. The runtime grows larger and larger and the rate at which it grows larger 
also increases, so it gets worse and worse. An algorithm that scales logarithmically in time will look like this. Note that the runtime still keeps increasing, but by a decreasing amount. This doesn't mean that a logarithmical algorithm is always faster, just that its runtime doesn't grow as quickly, so there must be a point from which onwards it is more efficient. But where exactly this point lies depends on all the details of the system and the algorithm. So an algorithm with lower computational complexity will eventually become superior in the long run for systems that get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's what the Karanidis Prakash quantum recommendation algorithm achieved. Karanidis and Prakash did show that their quantum algorithm was exponentially faster than the best known classical algorithm. What they did not show, however, was that this speedup was impossible for classical algorithms. And that is where Evin Tang comes in. Her supervisor at UT Austin, Scott Aronson, posed exactly this problem for her to solve. And for almost a year, she could not prove it. Then she changed her approach. She constructed a classical algorithm, very closely based on the quantum algorithm, to find out at what point exactly the problems would come in and where it would break down. The thing is, she found no problem. She actually succeeded in constructing a classical algorithm that was very closely modeled off the quantum algorithm and with a similarly low complexity. On the one hand, that was quite a blow to quantum computing because it removed the supposed advantage of a very promising quantum algorithm. On the other hand, the way this was achieved was by reconstructing the quantum algorithm using an approach that nobody would have ever taken otherwise. So I guess quantum computing was defeated by quantum computing? Either way, this means there will now probably never be a quantum version of Netflix. So is quantum computing useless now? No, there are still other applications where quantum computers can beat classical computers. But it was a loss, for sure.